Hey, hey guys. Hey, Mr. Watt. Hey, Mr. Baldwin. So, uh, remember we had candy in class the other day? Yes, we did. Some of those things, like the chocolate on the top, I think that has to be grown, right? Absolutely. you got to grow just about everything we eat. Because when we were talking about minerals, we said if it can't be mined, it must be grown. And mm -hmm. here we're talking about the it must be grown part. Yeah, and most everything we grow has to come from somewhere. Where does it come from? Coming from the soil. Soils, I love it. And when we start talking about soils, we're really going <coughs> to dig into the idea that there's a, a lot of interaction between each of the four spheres. So the biosphere plays a huge role in mm -hmm. soil formation and in the health of soils. Mm -hmm. Hydrosphere plays a huge role. The lithosphere controls what the parent material was. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the atmosphere contributing some precipitation and some other things to the And there's equation. air in the soil. Like there's atmosphere in between grains in the soil, Good which point. is kind of cool. Um, one of the things, make sure you guys write this down. We added some slides on you guys. So just start on page 20 here. And then we'll tell you to kind of flip around between a couple different pages. Yeah, so here is, is page 20. You can take these notes on page 20 quick before we flip to yet another new slide, but there's not much to write down on the next slide. Yeah. So here we go to the next slide. All right, so the big question is what is soil? We all know you go outside and it's just soil. I mean, you think of it just being soil, but we have yeah. to kind of define what it is. So it's really a mixture of a couple different things. Mm -hmm. So a good mix or a well-mixed soil has about 25% water, 25% air mixed into it. Okay, so that's the atmosphere and the hydrosphere components. Atmosphere and hydrosphere. Good. Okay, but now we need some solid stuff in there. Yeah. So we have to have some mineral particles, which is really just weathered and broken down rocks. So the lithosphere component. Lithosphere, okay. absolutely. And then we've got a little bit of organic matter, which is our? Biosphere. Biosphere, absolutely. Okay. And when you see organic matter, if you go out and dig in your backyard, a lot of times it's really dark. And that really yeah. dark part actually gives or is from that organic matter. And one of the things we call that, it's called humus, is partially broken down organic matter. Okay, so it would be anything like leaves that mm -hmm. have started to decay, roots from plants that are actually in the soil that uh -huh. may be alive or maybe starting to decay. Could be bugs, earthworms. Poop. Okay, any of that kind of <laughs> stuff that's in the soil. Absolutely. All components of the organic portion. Good. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, so soil, it's made up of a couple different parts. Now we're looking mainly at the mineral part of the soil. Right, so the lithosphere component. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so when we're talking about the different parts of the mineral component, we're looking at different size particles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the biggest particle we see, as you can see on the left, is our gravel. Okay, gravel is about two millimeters big, all the way up to about, you know, pebble size. Yeah. I mean, pretty big size yeah. particles. Size. Okay. So then we go to the next smaller particle, and this is where we're really going to start to classify our soils mm -hmm. by their textures. And we'll be talking about this a little bit in class, and we'll talk about it a lot when we're out in the field. But we're going to talk about sand, mm -hmm. the next smaller size particle. And there again is a range of size for sand grains. Mm -hmm. But when you think about sand, you're going to think about something that if you were to rub it between your fingers, it would feel gritty. You would feel those little sand particles, and I mean gritty kind of feeling. And it almost feels like sandpaper. Yeah, like sandpaper. Good example. Yep. And then the next smaller size particle. Uh, we've got silt. So silt is a little bit small. Actually, it's a lot smaller than sand. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see it on the picture there. It's barely even visible on there. And this is actually just about the smallest visible thing you can see is a grain of silt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all it is, it's a small particle. And if you were to rub it between your fingers, it kind of feels like flour. It's really smooth to the mm -hmm. touch, almost slippery a little mm -hmm. bit. And if we think back to talking about the breakdown through chemical and mechanical weathering mm -hmm. of particles. If we start with something like a rock, granite maybe, mm -hmm. what we're going to see is pieces of gravel that could have multiple minerals in them. Mm -hmm. And then when we get down to the sand size particle, that's going to be primarily one mineral. What's that one mineral it's going to be? Uh, usually it's going to be quartz. Yeah. So like if you go to the beach and you're walking around on a sandy beach like Lake Michigan, uh, it's mostly quartz particles that you're stepping on. So that's smaller pieces of the quartz from the granite that broke down mostly through mechanical mm -hmm. weathering processes. And once we get smaller towards silt and clay, yeah. that's more chemical weathering. Right, so now we get to clay, which is the weathering, the chemical weathering product from a lot of feldspars. Mm -hmm. All right. And you're breaking down, you're changing the chemical composition a lot of these particles, and you're actually making something so small you can't even see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, You actually have to use a pretty high-powered microscope to be able to see it, and it's a really, really fine particle. But we're going to find out in the next video, actually, that clays are really important to the quality of the soil for agriculture. Absolutely. So sand, silt, and clay are the big three when we're talking about soil textures. Mm -hmm. Sand, silt, clay. 
biggest to smallest. Sand is biggest, silt in the mid in intermediate, and clay the smallest. Yep, make okay. sure you write those down, guys. Got them. All right, so this slide is actually in your packet. You should be on page 20, and we're going to be talking about soil horizons mm -hmm. and what those are characteristically made up of. So do you want to start from the bottom or the top? Uh, start from the bottom. It kind of okay. makes sense down there. Yeah. So if you look all the way at the bottom, you've got this thing called an R horizon. Another word they have for that is the regolith or the rocky horizon. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you want to write down regolith, it's R-E-G-O-L-I-T-H. Okay, and that regolith is just the parent rock. It's just solid rock that you're starting with. Nothing's been broken down yet, nothing's been weathered. So this is maybe the original material that was there before the soil formed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so then the next layer up, we've got a sea horizon. Okay, the sea horizon is gonna be basically the partially weathered or broken down parent material. Okay, okay so it's taking the R horizon, breaking it up a little bit. Mainly physical, or sorry, mechanical weathering at that point. Right, so you're taking the bigger pieces of rock, breaking them into smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. And then I guess above that, we're going to start to see in the B horizon some of the material that was chemically weathered yep. from the original parent rock material. Mm -hmm. So in that B horizon, what are the things we're going to find in there? So you're going to see a lot more clays, because we mm -hmm. said higher chemical weathering in that layer. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to see as much sand, but you're still going to see some of those bigger rocky materials, those rocky fragments. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we're not seeing any of the organic material here yet, right? No organic material down there. Okay. Most of the organics are going to be up towards the top, towards okay. our next layer. Let's, uh, in the we, oh, B layer, are we going to see things that have maybe leached down from the surface? Mm -hmm. So when it rains, things that are dissolved in the rainwater that seeps into the soil, mm -hmm. those are going to get down into the B layer and concentrate there as well, right? Yeah, because if you, like, say, spilled something on the surface, it would kind of leach or trickle down mm -hmm. through the soil, and it would gather or collect. They call that, Ill, with an I, illuviate. Uh, and it would illuviate, which means just kind of end or leach down to the B horizon. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's skip the E horizon for right now and okay. come back to it towards okay. the end. Okay, so the next horizon is the A horizon. Okay, this is the horizon we're all really familiar with. If you dig in your backyard, you're digging up the A horizon. Okay, this is a lot of your physical and chemical weather, mm -hmm. and you've got a lot of organic matter here. Mm -hmm. So you've got your broken down plants, you've got your broken down animals, you've got all kinds of stuff that's starting to break, in, break down. And this is the layer we often call topsoil, right? Because mm -hmm. it's on the top. It is. Perfect. All right, so then we have the O horizon on top of the A horizon, and uh -huh. the O here, if you just remember, O is organic. That's where our organic material is. So if you've got a lot of roots, if you've got leaves, if you've got plants that are actually growing there, mm -hmm. grass, those are all part of that O horizon. Like if you were to go out to like a forest and then you see a bunch of partially decayed leaves and they kind of look like there's still parts of it, mm -hmm. that's all that O horizon. That's all that humus we were talking about before. Now we skip that E horizon. Yeah, let's go back to E. Okay, E is the weird one. Okay, E is for the eluviation. Okay, uh, is it two L's or one L? Two L's. Two L's. So it's E L L U V I A T I O N. You got it. Alluviation. Spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the eluviation horizon. It simply means it's the layer where there's leaching taking place. Mm -hmm. Now we talked about leaching in the last uh, video, I think. Um, where basically you're trickling down or you're leaching or you're sending particles that are washing away from the top horizon down through the bottom horizon. So they could be particles washing away. They could also be material that's being dissolved by the water mm -hmm. that's being carried down into that horizon as well. So, like so if, if you, you put fertilizer mm -hmm. on your lawn, that's going to seep down with the water and it may end up in that E horizon. Uh-huh. And like we've also got salt on the roads now. That Ooh, salt yeah. dissolves and has to leach through the soil. So you're mm -hmm. actually leaching a lot of salt through your soil, through that okay. E horizon. Okay. So hopefully as we went through that slide, it was kind of a long slide, you mm -hmm. went through and wrote down the characteristics of each of the horizons. If you didn't, you probably need to drag that slider back over to the left a little bit and mm -hmm. go through, write down the characteristics of each horizon. You can pause as you do that as well. Mm -hmm. And we should probably have them so they know the way to memorize the order of it. Oh, good idea. Do you know the cool way to memorize it? Uh, probably not. Oh, Mr. Z taught me this one, okay? So if you start right. from the top, you go to the bottom. It's only alligators eat baby chickens. Really? Does get it? Says baby chick. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Z. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go okay. to the next one. So. We already started so, talking about making soil. We're yeah. forming soil. We kind of already gave you some of the, the info you need to know about this, but we're going to give you four main steps on making soil. Right. 
Okay. And I love this diagram. It's so visual. It almost tells you what the steps are. Mm -hmm. So going from the left to the right, step one on the left shows us that we have really bedrock that's being attacked by water. So mm -hmm. maybe some frost wedging happening mm -hmm. there and other forms of mechanical weathering. Uh huh. And so that's going to be our initial parent material. And that's pretty much all our horizon. That's all you got is bedrock. Yep. Okay. All right. So step two, what you end up having is a little bit of organic materials. Mm -hmm. So you get like mosses that start growing, or they call them lichens. Mm -hmm. um, and basically you have a little bit of chemical weathering starting to take place. So now you're starting to create a little bit of that sea horizon. You're breaking down the parent material mechanically, and then you're making a little bit more of an organic horizon. Okay, so it sounds like from the left to the right, from step one, mm -hmm. moving to the right, we're looking at a progression over time, mm -hmm. right? So you could think about the x-axis of this as being time. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So then for uh, step three, when you're actually having some more of the horizons form, if you look at the bottom of it, you still have that R horizon, the yeah. bedrock. We've right still here, got right? bedrock at the bottom. We've got the C horizon, that's the mechanically or partially physically broken down material. Mm -hmm. Then we got up towards the top and we're starting to develop our A horizon. Okay, we're adding organic matter into this. We're mixing it in the, the mineral soil with the organic part of the soil. So it's evolving, soil is evolving from the bottom up, but mm -hmm. it's also evolving from the top down. Because there's that leaching we talked about. Right, okay. and in this case we have only an R layer, a C layer, an A layer, and an O layer. Small so o we're layer, missing yeah. the E and the B layers, and okay. that's common if we go out and look at soil profiles from different areas, which we'll be doing in class. Mm -hmm. It's common that you don't have every horizon present in every soil profile, right? Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, good. And then the fourth step? You develop your, uh, sorry, you develop more layers as you go through. Okay. okay. So again, we're going from the bottom up and from the top down. So from the top, we're washing down water and we're leaching all kinds of materials. We're chemically weathering some of the, mm -hmm. uh, the layers. And from the bottom, we're still changing that bedrock into the you know partially broken down bedrock. Right. Got it. Okay, you think they're uh, ready to take a quiz on this? I think they're ready to go. All right, let's go. Right. So hop out to your class webpage and take your mastery check quiz, and we'll see you guys in class tomorrow. See you guys. Bye.